How are you? Are you alive? He says, how are you? Are you breathing? <laughs> <laughs> breathing? I, I don't know. It, it, you know, this is the crazy stuff. You, I, I mean, I get it. But there's people in Africa that will stand on their feet all together. We're talking about 100,000 people were standing on their feet together, close, breathing on each other, just to hear the gospel. If, you, if you're looking for convenience in the gospel, then the gospel is not for you. If you're looking for convenience, if you're looking for things to be easy in the word of God, it's not for you. God will never use you. God will never use you. God don't have no need of you. Because how could people in Africa could stand? I mean, there's no chairs, by the way. There's no furniture, by the way. And they can stand almost all night to hear the gospel. They've been, I heard testimony that people will carry their chair for three days to get to church. A wooden chair to get to church. Walk, I mean, it's about three days walking. Some of us can't even go 30 minutes. <laughs> the other day I was like, the other day I was in, uh, I went to TJ Maxx, right? And, 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 and got in the car parked in TJ Maxx. And then they, 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 they said, well, we're going to go to Home Goods next. I said, okay, we're going to go to Home Goods next. Let's go. And then I said, let's walk there. For one parking lot to another. No, we need to take the car. <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> New York, we walk everywhere. <laughs> so so, so I, I want to talk to you today before I get into the message. Pastor was saying, I have a John Ramirez, and I don't like to call it John Ramirez because it seems like I'm promoting me. I don't, it's not about promoting me. I thank God that I, I pray that I never will promote me. Amen? But it's called John Ramirez in a circle. And the reason I do a John Ramirez in a circle is to help people, bless people. There's people that, been in my, that are in my inner circle. Amen? And, and, they, and it's just to build a wonderful family, people that I can connect, communicate, talk to. I'm not going to use the word men mentorship, a community that we can grow spiritually. Amen? We can grow spiritually. And I have the inner circle. I have that in John Ramirez inner circle. And I take this very seriously. You with me? I take it very seriously. So, so when my inner circle say, they email me, say, hey, we're going we're gonna to be in Glendale. I make sure that they get seats. Understand? I make sure they, they, they get seats. I make sure you treat them like you treat me. You see? Because I, I believe in community. I believe in family. And, man, I'm not building something just because I, I, I want finances. I'm building something because it, builds, it bu not only builds the kingdom, but it brings glory to God. Okay? So, so, and man, so the other day, I was supposed to go somewhere. I'm not going to say where because I don't want to give it all away. And I said, hey, uh, my, they email my ministry. And, and uh, some of the inner circle people said, there are like five of them, say, hey, we're going to be at this place that, that you're going to be in, right? So I emailed the company. I emailed nothing. I emailed the ministry. I emailed the ministry. I said, hey, we're going we're gonna, to hold five seats. You know, some people coming, mines, whatever. They said, no, we're not going to hold no seats. We did not register, whatever. They give them a hard time. And if, you're in a, if your people that are coming, uh, if, they get, if they get a little nasty, we'll call the police on them and get them arrested. So I told them, okay. I said, yeah, I'll tell you what. I told them, I'll tell you what. Is the event sold out? Yes, it's sold out. I said, get yourself another preacher. You ain't going to mess with my brother and sister. Get yourself another preacher. I'm not going. I'm not going. You're not going to, you, you, believe me, not on my watch. You're not going to crap on my people. And because you're promoting your, your situation, you're not going to do it. I'm not going. Get yourself some bozo to preach. 24 hours, we sorry, we got the seats. We sorry, we got the seats now. I said, now I go. Now I go. I'm not going for you. I'm going for my inner circle. And for the people. And for the people that are my inner circle, for people that need deliverance. I'm not going for you. So don't get it twisted. See? Not too long. And then there was another ministry that was very uh, immature in a good way. They did, a, they did a, an event. They said, 200. I'm not going either. I'm like, I'm like Walmart, slice it in half. 50% off. Okay, then I go. 50% off, I go. 
I'm like a cheap pastor or preacher. You know, I sell, I sell myself short because it's about the kingdom. Man, it's about the kingdom. It's about people. God, the gospel and deliverance is for all people. It's not for the people that can afford it. It's not for people that can afford it. It's for all people. That's why in California, Pastor and I, we want to build something here. I feel that the Lord has, has connected me with this man so we sure. can build something here together. And it's going to be awesome. Same way I'm building my inner circle on, on, on Facebook. I'm building the inner circle. They, they ain't for a roller coaster ride. They're going to be tested. They're going to be proven. They're going to be stretched. They, they might, some days you're going to say hallelujah. Some days you're going to say ouch. Uh -huh. Okay, because I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to bring some things to you that you're going to be like, man, I, I, did I really join this? Is this is really for me. Because if you're not stretched, you can't be God's best. You see, either, either you transform or you deform. That's right. You, you can either be transformed or deformed in Christ. Amen? And I don't, I don't want, you know, Christ is coming back for a bride, not for Frankenstein. It's a difference. You see, Frankenstein's girlfriend, not, I don't care how much makeup you put on that chick, she don't look hot at all. Okay, so, so, so. I, I want to share with you, before I get into the message real quick, Pastor and I, we're building something here, and we want to do something special in California, that it will reach the north, the south, the east of California. We want to build something here that will touch California. I believe California and New York City are very central for Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe New York City and California is a big two platform that God wants to do something incredible, outrageous in those two places. Because New York City is on the crossroads of the world. That's what they say. You know, New York City is crazy. Come on, you got to be like really super anointed to live in that place. You got to be like super anointed. <laughs> you gotta be, listen, I was doing cheesecake delivery. And I said this real quick. I was doing cheesecake delivery. I was, I was, I was part-time minister at the time. I was doing cheesecake delivery. I was part-time minister. And I, 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 lo I loved the job, but I hated it, you know. And, and, and because I wanted to be in full-time ministry. And, and, and I, I would go somewhere and preach. I went to Kurosawa. I preached to 8,000 people in three days. And wow. then the Monday morning, I'm in the cheesecake truck with Rain Man. Right? This guy, he knew all the addresses in the city. I mean, this guy was like a computer with, like Rain Man. I mean, <laughs> so I'm doing cheesecake and ministry. And I'm like, man, I, I, what was, I, mean, I, I, would, I would just want to be in full-time ministry. I, I don't want to do this cheesecake stuff no more. So, I, you know, that was my, my job for like three years. You know, God had me there for like over three years doing cheesecake, dropping. I mean, cheesecake was delicious, but I didn't want to keep doing cheesecake. So it kept going on with the cheesecake, cheesecake, cheesecake. And, 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 and I, I used to go down 42nd Street to drop off cheesecake to the big restaurant, 42nd Street, drop off cheesecake to the big restaurant. And one day, you know, New York City is crazy. One day. One day, I saw the, because New York City, if you go to 42nd Street, they have, like, World Disney, and they have, like, all the cartoon characters. People get $15 an hour to get dressed up, like, you can get dressed up like Wood, uh, Woody. You can get dressed like, you know, whatever, the, 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 the you know, the uh, Toy Story characters. You can get dressed up like that. You can dress up like Batman, Cinderella. I mean, you get paid $15 an hour. You put on that costume. So you put on the costume. I saw, I saw SpongeBob get beat up by the cops. <laughs> Uh, they could, I saw Spongebob. I mean, Spongebob was harassing a tourist, and the, and, and the tourist called the cops on him. The cops came, took Spongebob, punched him in the face, took him, flipped him over, <laughs> dropped him on the floor, and cuffed Spongebob. I saw Spongebob went to jail. <laughs> so, you know, New York City is crazy. I mean, you take Spongebob to jail, you know we live in the Vida Loca. So, so I... I I, I want to, <laughs> I just want to, I have a small message to you today, and it's really going to minister to your heart. I believe in my heart it's going to minister to you. And uh, I know the reason I bought a sponge bag because I look like a rug rat, right? I look like a rug rat. You're, you're, you're too young, you don't know what that means. But I, I just want to say something quick. I know I'm not trying to, uh, I know that people liked my shirt yesterday. 
And I, I, you know, I could say, well, that was my idea, but it's not my idea. It's my friend, Pastor Juan Martinez. It's his idea. Uh, I got to stretch this out a little bit. And if you want to go to his website, I give it his website. You can get the shirts at his website. He got an amazing shirt. He's a visionary. God has given him a vision to create uh, things that are awesome. He has a book that is called Over the, uh, Over the Yellow Green Row. It's about Dorothy. But you can see Dorothy. You can see yourself in Dorothy. You know, the, the, the Yellow Green Row is, is the, the road that God put us on. Amen. The Wizard. You know, I mean, he got crazy stuff, but he turns it into a Christian book. Amazing book. He has that there, too. And it's called Havikin. It's called W-W-H-E-A-V-I-C-A-N-S dot com. Hmm? My Puerto Rican accent is sexy. I know. What it was. It's on my shirt, case you know, but I don't know if people can, I don't know if people can read. So it's there. You know, if you want to get, they got, he got amazing shirts, hats, everything. I'm not, I'm not here, I'm just giving you. The reason I'm pulling out there, people ask me, where did you get that shirt? Where did you get that shirt? So I don't want to be greedy and keep it to myself. So I just give it a website. If you want to go there and get a shirt and buy me one too, I'm a large. Just kidding. The people get sentimental. Why should I buy you one? You know, I, we, we, one thing I want to say, we, we believe in, Pastor and I, we believe in, we believe in that God is going to bless us with a building. Right, because we rent this place, and this place is really from the city. And, and every week we got spiritual warfare in this place. We got spiritual warfare in this place. And it's, but this is the spiritual warfare. They're always harassing him. They're always harassing him about when he could get the place and all this stuff. And the reason I bring that up is because, you know, any offerings that we collect, we, 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 we're going to try to get, temp how you call that again? The AC thing? What do you call it? Air A AC, air conditioning. Yeah, I know that. We cannot place. have a central Port because portable, the right? is portable, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get portables AC, and we're saving, we want to save money for that. And we want to say, you know, we believe in God, supernatural. God will bless us with a building that we can have and, and, and have, you know. It's not easy. Listen, I, I'll say this. It's not easy to take this down every day, every time we do something. We got to take it down. We got to put it back up. We got to clean the place. If you have your own church building, you can have your own piano there, you can have your own stuff there, you can, you know, it would just be a lot easier, you know, just to walk in and have service, and then we can have stuff on, on during the week, I understand, because if you build, we want to build the kingdom, we just don't want to make the kingdom a weekend thing, we want to make the kingdom even doing midweek service, you know, and because sometimes you go Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, the devil shows up, midweek, that devil shows up on midweek, you know what I mean, he's trying to drain you in midweek. And you're like, man, I can't wait to Sunday. No, we want to get something going. But it's going to be, a, it, we, we want to do a spiritual warfare. Yes, sir. We want to do like a spiritual warfare church. Understand? Not, not a practical church. And no wrong with practical church, but spiritual warfare church. That, we, we, that when you pray, targets are come down. When you pray, curses are broken. When you pray, amen, the devil trembles. When you pray, people get healed. When you pray, you set the captives free. When you pray for your family, generational curses are broken from your family. Amen? Listen, I don't want my family to be, you know, me preaching and doing all kinds of things, and my family is bombed by generational curses. Amen? I want my family to be free. Amen? I mean, listen, my brother got free, and I share this last one moment before we collect an offer. My brother was a transvestite. He was homosexual. He was bisexual. He was a witch doctor, and he was married to a regular woman. He had five crazy things going on, okay? He had five things. I mean, we, my brother used to dress like a woman and sing in gay clubs. I mean, I'm, not a, I'm, not I'm not embarrassed to say it because there's a, in his story, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a blessing to his story because my brother used to do cocaine. He would do parties. He would make Saddam and Gomorrah look like kindergarten. I'm talking about he had, in his parties, you, if you were normal, you couldn't come to his party. If you were crazy as a fruitcake, then you invited. And my brother had all kind of like substance. I'm, I'm kids are here, but you know, substance, you know, you, you read between the lines. Right? He had all kind of stuff. People would get high in his party. Sometimes his party would go for three days. People sit in the house partying for three days. And he caught a heart attack. And, and then I went to the hospital to go see him, preach the gospel. And then he wanted to go, and God said, go. 
and I went and obeyed God. And my brother broke down, crying, received Jesus, and his wife was there. It was like a normal day that day in the hospital because all the crazy people from Sodom and Gomorrah didn't come to the hospital that day. They took a break. And my brother, then my, bro when my brother got saved. He was like, John, you know, we would sit in the car and we'd sing, we would listen to that song, How Great Is Our God. You could only imagine. We would listen to all these crazy songs. You know, me and my brother just chilling, you know, just we were down, up and down with Jesus on, on the car listening to the gospel with him. You know, and he said, yo, make me some CDs. Make me some CDs. I said, no, Christian, we don't make bootleg CDs, man. I steal it. <laughs> but I made them anyway. And I, rep and, and I repented. And man, <laughs> so I made the bootleg CDs. And he said, I'm doing my party. I'm doing my party. I'm bringing all my friends. I'm bringing all my friends with me. I said, I, he said, I'm going to play, I'm going to play How Great Is Our God. I'm going to play You Can Only Imagine. I said, you can only imagine that can of whooping they're going to open up on you in the house. I said, you better have like 911 on standby. But my brother, a week before his birthday, he died in his sleep and went home with Jesus. And my brother went to church. He got baptized. And, 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 and he never, the next day he was supposed to come see my mom's to run errands and never made it to my mom's house and passed away and went home with Jesus Christ. And there was no party. But see, God's ways is not our ways. Right? So I preached my brother's funeral, and, and Salomon Gomorrah came to the funeral. Salomon Gomorrah came to the funeral. And I preached, I preached the only thing I know how, the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And that day, I'm talking about they had women that can bend, they had women that came, they can bench press you. <laughs> I know what they look like. I mean, they, they, I'm talking about, they made me look like Gilligan. And they had men that came in, they looked like my sister. <laughs> Crazy. They all sat in the row. They all took the front row, third row, third row, fourth row, full of them. But Jesus loved them too. And my brother, I had his party. And when the gospel was preached, it hit that place, rocked that place, shook that place. 18 people of those people raised their hand and said, I want Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior because God is good. So my brother that day, my brother, when he was alive, never won a soul for Jesus. But that day he won 18 people that were supposed to be in his party. And he was supposed to be there. So I was, I was how would they call that when you do the party? I was the DJ at the funeral, and I stood, yeah, 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 how great, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can only imagine, I was mixing them up, baby. So, <laughs> so never, unless, never count God out. Never count him out. You with me? Never count him out. So before I just say the message quick, we just want to collect a quick offering and stop being stingy. Yes, people, we had 320 people here. That's pastor. Pastors. Yes, sir. We had 320 people here. Yeah. Stingy people, right? Well, the, we, the offering, basically, like when we check, it was a person $15. And uh, we were, I was just sharing Listen. with my wife. I said, when they go to store, they go to weddings. You spend more money they stop, more money, but you don't give Jesus anything. for the anything. kingdom of God, they pay pennies. We got about this size of dollars. I deposited yesterday so we can, you know. And, and me and my son were almost breaking our arms. My son said, I wish this is like at least $10. It was $1, but this big. You know, the $20 and $1 met each other. And $20 says, hi, Rubin. Hi, Rubin, $1. says, ah, it's church, church, church. And he says, how, how about you, $20? says, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Las Vegas. You know, people spend big money. in, But when it comes to the Lord, they just, I mean, we, we really need, need, look at this warm, hot. You know, a lot of people texting us, emailing us. We cannot come because of the heat. And strippers give money in the church. Equipments. I mean, uh, yesterday was like making like this crazy devil noise. <laughs> and people like jump in there. We need to fix that. And that's expensive, you know. Listen, if I wanted to pimp you, I, I can do it. Believe me, I did it in witchcraft so, for 25 years. I yeah. can pimp your underwears off. You, you walk out of here without no undies. I can pimp them off you. I, but I don't do that because I, I, get, I, 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 I fear God. But strippers get more money than church. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. 
There's pastors that go to strip clubs, by the way. I'm not going to mention no name, but there's pastors they go to strip clubs. And, and, and your tithes and offering, they go to a strip club. Susie dancing up there, swinging on that pole like she, she a monkey, she get your money. <laughs> See, people don't want the truth. I could tell you a, a famous pastor, he's from California. He has a mega church. I was down in, I was down in the Caribbean, uh, uh, I think two months before, uh, two months after he preached. And as soon as he preached, he went to the strip joint. And then I'm honest. I come here with my rug rat shirt. I'm asking you to bless the church, and you give me a dollar. You give me church money. Give God your best. I never rob God. I always give God his best. I know how to eat pizza in Chinese. I'm good at that. I, I tithe. I tithe way over my 10%. Because you know why? In the Old Testament, they're talking about the law, right? And, and they gave 10%, and they were under the law. You with me? They were 10%, and they were under the law. How much more would you give God that you're under grace? Amen. How much more you would give God that you're under grace? Because if you were under the law, and you were mandatory to give 10%, which many of you don't give 10%, no. how much more under grace you would give God? You give Starbucks more money than you give God. Exactly. Starbucks is a devil. You know that. That's the Antichrist. Pastor got a year's membership in Starbucks. <laughs> membership? Yeah, I think so. Where's the little lady? What lady? Um, Miriam. The one she's not dying? Uh, let me see. Susambar, where are you? She's so little, I can't see her. No, she's I told like you. She's over there, look. It's, that's the Moses. She's not dying, guys. Yeah. She keeps praying and God that's keeps hero. extending her life. Come over here, honey. <laughs> She's my friend. This is my, this is my honey right here. This is my honey. I, I, you know, I, I was saying yesterday, I needed her when I was in the clubs. You know, I needed her when I was in the clubs because I could put my beer right up here and hang out. <laughs> Now you're going to get old one year. Man. All right. Man. Praise Jesus. The f a 40 is bigger than her. <laughs> you know what happened one time, man of God? Government gave her a money, $5,000. She kept it a little bit. The rest she donated to the church. See? And she, she's 78. True. 78 years old. She fasts every day. Yeah. She prays every day. She, she, she runs circles around me. And she reads the Bible like crazy. See? Finishes three times almost. So when we, when we get to heaven and there's a line of testimonies, I promise you, she'd be in front of the line. And she never been on TV. She never wrote a book. But she got two things. She's faithful and she got faith and she pleased God. Yes, sir. Like I told you yesterday. So let's uh, collect the offering. Let's collect the offering. And then we're, I want to so pray over the offering. Because I, I forgot to pray yesterday over the offering. I want to pray that God break the spirit of poverty over your life. Yes. That if you have, if you have, if, if when you sow, you sow to the kingdom the correct way, not the pimp way, pimp you, you know, pimp you. You sow the correct way to so the spirit of poverty. Or if you have any student loans or you have any mortgage, that God would bless you because you bless the kingdom first. Amen. Amen. And it's not, it's not a pimping thing. I don't pimp you. I'm not asking you. I'm like these crazy preachers. To, wow. They got people over here. Yeah. And they got people over here. And I can feel the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I can feel the Holy Spirit. Tell me three people over here got $500. Yeah. I, uh, my throat will be burning after doing that. Yeah. I know what that means, but that means I'm ripping you off. That's what that means. Oh, you get, oh, you go to Spanish church and be a sancto hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I mean, I mean, by the time that service over, he got no shoe left. <laughs> let's, cut, let's just do it the right way. Bless the Lord. As you give, God will bless you, and I pray it with you. Just want to bless your name. God, exalt your holy name, oh Lord. Very soft. Just want to praise you. Be my servant, say I love you. You are everything to me, and I.
just want to praise you. Guys, let's sing at same time, so sweet until they they collect the offerings, so we can pray for the offerings. Beautiful song. We we gonna pray for the offering. Just right here, offering people. Let's just, let's just believe, believe God for your victory. Believe God for your breakthrough. Maybe it's not a financial thing. Maybe, maybe you need to be healed from something. See, blessing, when you sold to the kingdom, it's not about just money. It's about maybe your family needs to get saved. Maybe, 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 maybe there's someone in your family that's sick in the hospital. Maybe, 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 your, marriage, maybe your marriage is on the rocks. Maybe, you want, maybe you, there's, different, there's different avenues of breakthrough that we might need. My, my situation, you know, when I, when I sow into the kingdom and I give God his own, to make a long story short, maybe it's my eyesight that I need, I need a breakthrough. Understand? It, it, it's, it's not about I sow to the kingdom money and I get back money. God is bigger than money. Yep. God is bigger than money. It could be a situation that God, Lord, protect my family. Bring my family. You know, maybe you have family that is up in age and they don't know Jesus yet. Invest in that. Lord, you know, my grandmother in Puerto Rico, I remember, I didn't talk to her for 20 years. And then one day I come out of church and the Lord said, call her. I said, like, for what? And the Lord said, your grandmother needs to get saved. And I said, okay. So I, I called my grandmother in Puerto Rico. And I had, she's my favorite grandmother, by the way. You know, it's like, you know, she was my favorite grandmother. So I called her. I said, Abuelita, how you doing? What's going on? She said, oh, you call. And I could speak to 20 years. And then I said, Abuelita, do you want to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And she said, well, I, I don't know. I don't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior yet. I said, well, I'm going to help you do it. And I took my messed up Spanish. I brought her to the Priscilla's Prayer. I brought her to Carberry. I brought her up to Carberry all the way to, 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 the, to, the, to John 3, 16. So God, I brought my whole messed up Spanish. And three months later, my, grand, my grandmother went home with the Lord. So that was my sowing, my seed to give to, to my, so, so my grandmother could know Jesus before she departed from the earth. You with me? So, so let's pray. Let's just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for those that gave and those that didn't give, Father God, that you will bless them, that they'll be able to be a, they'll be able to be a blessing to the kingdom, that they'll be able to prosper, Father God, they're so prosper in every area, their family, their loved ones, Father God, their purpose, their destiny, Father God. There will be no hindering, delay, blockages, or distractions of any kind, Father God. Lord, we sow into the kingdom because, Lord, because, not because it's mandatory, it's because we love you. And Father, we want your work to be done on the earth, and we want people to be set free. We want people to be healed and delivered, Father God, because, Lord, all of us get credit in heaven for doing so. Because this is a team thing. This is not a John thing. This is a team thing. This is not a church thing. This is, this, is, this is not a passive thing. This is a Jesus thing. So, Father, we bless you, and, Lord, break that spirit of poverty. Lord, break that spirit of lack, Father God. Break that spirit of delay. Father God, that stagnant the devil, let us ship and die in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, touch our family. Touch our loved ones, Father God. Touch this generation. Father, touch our bloodline. Let that bloodline curse be broken completely. Let that bloodline curse be broken. So there won't be no alcoholism. There won't be no homosexualism. There won't be no, there won't be no, there won't be no, no sickness of any kind in our family bloodline. There, there will, we will not pass it on to our other generation, our children. Father, we trust you that you're big enough to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey Amen. I just want to talk to you really quick. My, the title of my message, The Devil's Playbook. The Devil's Playbook. But my other side of the spectrum, you have a playbook too. 
You with me? The devil's playbook. But you got a playbook too. And your playbook comes, your, the name of your playbook is called Purpose and Destiny. And it comes with a manual, which is the Bible. The devil has a playbook. He has a playbook. And his name of his playbook, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the name of his playbook. But my playbook is called Purpose and Destiny and Vision. And the manual to my playbook, because it comes together, it is the Bible, the word of the Lord. That will guide me through, that will guide me through, that will get me to victory and get me to the promised land. Amen? Okay? So the devil's playbook, the devil's playbook, right? The devil's playbook has, has his chapters of his playbook called setups, entrapment, hindering, blockages, delays, and distraction to slow you down. And then he, he, he engrafts in you opinions, opinions and false reality that if you manifest, if, if you meditate them, they manifest to become something real in your life. You with me? If you stay in that place, then they become real in your life. Manifestation. The things that we go through. That's how the devil's playbook sounds like. And that's the game that the devil plays. But you have a playbook too. It's called purpose. It's called destiny. God has given it to you. When God gave you the playbook of your life, when he gave you a birthday and sent you into time. Don't, don't, think, don't you think you're 40 years old. You, you, you don't have an age. Some of you are saying, well, I got wrinkles, but that's your problem. <laughs> God gave you a birthday. He gave you a birthday and sent you to time with a playbook. Some of us lost the playbook. Purpose and destiny. Your belief, your belief to know that God sent you into time. He gave you a birthday. He gave you time. He gave you time. He gave you birthday. He gave you purpose and destiny. It counts. It, your belief, it counts by faith. Because you can do all things, all things. That is the scripture that rocks your world. I can do all things, all things to Christ Jesus. I can do all things. To, ain't no sometimes seasonal, maybe, maybe not. I can do all things, all things. I mean, all things, all things. I mean, there's nothing that can stop you. There's nothing that can delay you. There's nothing that can entrap you. There's no setup. I can do all things, all things to him that gives me the strength. Why? Because with him, I can accomplish all things. I can accomplish all things, all things to him, all things. Because God has given you righteousness. God has given you righteousness. Deposit righteousness in you to faith in Christ Jesus. You with me? Faith in Christ, he has deposit on you. Deposit on you. To go, your faith will take you down every mile of your purpose and your destiny. Your faith will take you down every mile of your faith and your destiny. Your purpose and your destiny. Your faith, like we spoke about faith yesterday. Your faith is your convoy. It is your vehicle to your ministry. It's the vehicle to your life. That's a good deal to me, Jack. I take it. Bingo, sign me up for that. I'll take it. You are defined, you are defined by your vision, your purpose, and your destiny. By God. God doesn't run on this coincidence thing. Maybe it happened. Maybe I'll get back to you on Tuesday. If God speaks like that, we'll be in trouble. 
Your vision, you are defined by your vision. The Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge. That means vision. That means vision. Write the vision, make it plain. In a point in time, it will come to pass. Write your vision. Don't, God is not your microwave. Get, stop tripping. God is agriculture. God is, the devil is microwave. You get it easy, you lose it easy. You ever have microwave food, you eat it, half hour later, you're hungry. God is agriculture. You have to plant it by faith. Plant it by faith before you see it. The devil is like, oh, you remember when we were in the world? Oh, show it to me, man. You know, if you show it to me, I believe it. You know how it is. You know, when we were in the world, we would hear that. Yeah, you show it to me, then I believe you. That's the devil. And Jesus, you have to believe it before you see it. It's called faith. It's called faith. It's called faith. The devil is, the devil is chasing. It's, the devil is chasing and trying to take away your playbook. I don't care how great the football team is. You take away their playbook, they can't play. I don't care how you see them up there and the coach up there and the thing talking, talking, communicating. That's Jesus communicating with you down here. Think about the football game. Jesus communicating, Holy Spirit down here, the coach. Remember the coach got the thing? The coach got the thing, right? The people up there, that's, that's God talking to the Holy Spirit down there, the coach. Hey, uh, play this play. We got them here so we can get closer to the promised land, to the touchdown. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just using it as an analogy. I mean, I, you know, football. You with me? See, if you see, if you see, if you see, if you know who you are, right? If you know who you are, and then you know what you will, you will know what you're not supposed to be. So you can't come and trick me trying to sell me something because I know who I am. I'm not buying that. I'm not walking that way. I'm not going to the department store. If I'm buying shoes, what am I doing in the underwear section? This is a distraction. If you know who you are, then you can't come trick me with something that I'm not. That makes sense to you? Right there, I think that's, in, that's good enough that you came here. See, if you, don't know who you, if you don't know who you are, the devil, listen to me, if you don't know who you are, the devil will subscribe, he will subscribe, he will subscribe something to your identity and change it on you. He will subscribe something to your identity, he will change it on you because you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. And on, he will do it unto you. Instead of you walking by God in transformation, you walk by the devil deformed. How many Christians you know and I know that started, they were on fire. I mean, fire. You're like, oh, this brother's so hot, I got to wear shorts around him. I walk around with a bottle of water. <laughs> He's so hot. And now you got to wear, you got to wear Parker. You got to wear winter coat when you're around him. That brother's frozen. <laughs> that brother's like, whew. <laughs> I'm catching a cold, not COVID-19, a cold. Because he's frozen. Serious stuff, people. Serious stuff. Serious stuff. And that's what's happening to many of us. Sad to say that the opinions and the false realities of the devil, understand the opinions and the false reality of the devil that we buy into or we try to please. This is what we try to please. This is the system that the devil uses. You with me? The system that they were using, do you use people? The opinions of people, I don't care your opinions, shut up. If I've been with Jesus, who the heck are you? I know pastors don't support, preachers don't speak that way, but I'm crazy. You pray for me. The opinion of pe people, the devil's system, components that he uses, people, 
Child, I don't know. You think you're that. I don't know. I... That's the Holy Spirit talking, baby. Holy Spirit, get him, John. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. People will steal your blessing, but I don't know. I don't know. You tell you heard from God? I don't know. That don't sound like God to me. You know, I don't know. The opinions of people. The opinions of people. The opinions of people. The opinions of people. The world. Components of the, components of the devil. The world. You with me? The world. Family. You know your family's jacked up. You know, especially around Thanksgiving, all the devils come out. You can't even eat the turkey in peace. So you have to stab somebody in the family. Serious stuff in the family. Family. The devil will use family to discredit you, to, to, to break you. The devil will use family to drain you. Yeah, come on now. I'm talking to somebody. You're like, I, can't, I, I got full tank of gas. I go to my family. The devil will drain me. Come on. You know that I know my family was like that. Now they, God, God got a hold of them. They were arrested in the Holy Spirit. You with me? No, rest in the Holy Spirit. Let me give you another one. Friends. Friends. So-called friends. What about those devils? Don't leave them behind. Components of the enemy. Friends. I'm with you. Hosanna, Hosanna. Two weeks later, crucify him. I got your back. I'm your homie. Two weeks later, he gossiping about you, talking about you, backstabbing you. You know, talk all kind of crazy stuff about you, dumping on you. And this is the best part. I'm just telling you this stuff so you can pray for him. Get out of here. French components, what would the devil use this? To drain you, to disjoint you, to incomplete you, to steal your playbook, to steal your vision. Vision. Samson was awesome. Samson lost his vision. When he lost his vision, not only his head, but he lost his vision. He lost his anointing. He lost his vision. Ended up in the Colosseum. Broke, broke, broke and disgusted. And God just had mercy one more time and gave him strength to take everybody down. A man that was handpicked by God. A man that was handpicked by God. I don't, know how, I don't know how you see Samson. Samson didn't look like the cartoon, you know, bicep, triceps, and am. Samson looked like Gilligan. And it's in the Bible. He looked like Gilligan because they couldn't figure out, how, they couldn't figure out where his strength was coming from. If he looked like Samson, if he looked like, he looked like Hercules with muscles and abs and triceps, they said, well, he's, he works out. He goes to the ghost gym. You with me? I hope so. Amen? Come on, people. I'm giving you something. Because they, they always have the opinions of people, the opinions of family, the opinion. They always want you to, they want you to be what they, they want you to be what they think you should be, not what God wants you to be. I know. People are going to say, that's not a popular message, John. I don't care. God told me to preach it. Because we have lost our understanding who we are. The church started in the book of Acts. Fire. Crazy church. I'm talking about signs, miracles, and wonders. Not self-programs. Hoping that the Holy Spirit shall up on Sunday. You, you, make the, you make the house of God comfortable for the devil, but you make the house of God uncomfortable for him to come. Who stole your playbook? It's time to get it back. Because if you don't have no, if you have lost, if you have no understanding of who you are in Christ, there's two. I say this real quick. There's two people that, that that really broke my heart. Two people broke my heart. Two people that broke my heart in Christ. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. 
Tupac broke my heart and cried. Charles Temperton, he was a friend of Billy Graham. He graduated from Billy Graham, same college and everything. They graduated together. This man had an anointing. He was more charismatic. He was more anointed than Billy Graham. This man was a, he had a church of 1,200 people. At that time, and during that time, that was like a mega church. This man turned around, the devil hit him so hard because of a picture he saw, a false reality that he saw a picture with, a, with an African woman with a baby in her arms. You with me? And he said, Lord, why you didn't provide for her? Put God on, never put God on trial. Put him on, why you didn't provide for her? Why you didn't bless her? Why you didn't do nothing for her baby? And the, and, and, the, and the lady was holding the baby in her arm dead, right? And he was trying to blame God for the situation. And he renounced Christianity. And the first book he wrote was Farewell God. And renounced his ministry. They were questioning Billy Graham. What about your best friend? What about your best friend? Billy Graham said, he's still my best friend. But that's the decision he made. He's still my best friend. He's still my best friend. And he left, he left Jesus Christ into the age of 90. Now, some reporter went to his house to do a last interview. And when he got there, all the way in Canada, in Toronto, Canada, where he was living, where he was living, because he went, he became an atheist. A lot of people are atheists, they were believers. Trust me. Because if you didn't believe in Jesus, what would, what would you be so upset about it? If I don't believe in you, you ain't going to upset me. To me, you don't even exist. Atheists, they love Jesus more than some of the church people do. Undercover. Amen? I got, they, they, I'm in New York City. I, I, I go to a church called Times Square Church. And, and if, you put, if you put a sign on Broadway, right? A sign on Broadway, right? They put a sign that says, God is a myth. The atheists. Right? You know how much that sign costs to put up there for one week? A million dollars. You spend a million dollars to put a sign to say God is a myth, and you put it up there for like four or five weeks. That's five million dollars on a sign, stupid. You could have given me the money, and I would have built another church. I would have called the Church of the Ages, soon to be saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> you with me? Who has stolen the playbook? Because my Bible says, my Bible says one thing, I can do all things. I, can, I don't have to believe my word. I don't even trust myself. I'm crazy. I don't have to believe my word. I don't have to believe my own theology. Theology is wrong. A lot of theologians, they, they agree with each other, disagree with each other. The, theology doesn't make you right. Theology doesn't make you right. It makes you smart, but you're not smarter than God. Amen? And it's not wrong. If you know theology, good for you. If you know five languages, good for you. If you like Paul, five languages. Paul knew five languages. He was very religious. He did everything. God still had to slap him off the donkey. Right? <laughs> Paul was an intellect. He was like a Hebrews of Hebrews, a Pharisee of Pharisee. This brother had it going on. But when Jesus slapped him off that donkey, it was over. It was over. It was so over that Paul, Paul thought he had a resume. And then when Jesus slapped him off the donkey, he, he had a real resume. It was shipwrecked. I was beaten three times. I was left for dead. A snake bit me. <laughs> I was here. I was there. I, they would have to crawl me out of a window. That sounded like the projects. You didn't pay your rent. <laughs> he had to come down the window. <laughs> All that Paul, then he had a real resume after Jesus got him. Think about it. Who stole your playbook? Who has changed your identity? Who's saying that you're not, that you not this when God's saying, yes, you are this? My prayer for you is simple. My prayer for you is very simple today. Real simple prayer. Ain't no manifestation, demon falling all over the place. My prayer is simple. That you will believe when you leave here today with a shadow of a doubt, rain, snow, shine, that you can do all things to Christ Jesus that paid the price for you. That's my prayer for you. That's my prayer for you, that I can do all things through him. Blind, I can do all things. Broke, I can do all things. Sitting in the mountaintop, hanging, having a peppermint patty, I can do all things. In the valley, smelling like toast, I can do all things to Christ Jesus. Because he holds my today, he owns my tomorrow, and he holds the pen that's writing my story. C. 
sick, no sick. Listen, one day I had an eye, eye surgery, and I think it was 19, 2000 something, I had one of my, one, I had eight, eight eye surgeries already. And you know, no one came to pick me up. I was a young Christian. No one came to pick me up in the hospital. No Christian came to pick me up, at least take me home. I couldn't see. I had patches in my eyes. No one came to pick me up. With me? No one came. The doctor that did the surgery had to drive me home. But I can do all things through Christ Jesus. When I had my other eye surgery, I looked like a bumblebee. I had two patches. I looked like I was making a tuna fish commercial. I looked like a bumblebee. It was on a good Friday. I still, the doctor said, go home. You're, you laying down 12 hours this way, 12 hours this. I, I sound like one of them pork that you put, you know, pork you put in the, one of them pork you put in the oven. You got to flip it once in a while. I feel like one of those. <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about. She can cook. And you know what I did? I went to church in that condition. Someone drove me there because I can do all things to Christ Jesus, who who's gives me the strength. B bankrupt me. I went to bank. I'm Puerto Rican. Doesn't mean I was. Let me just get this clear. I'm Puerto Rican. I went to bankruptcy court. And there's a lot of Puerto Ricans there, just so you, in case you know. But I didn't go because I didn't go because I'm Puerto Rican and. I ended up there. I ended up there. Some Christian did a Ponzi scheme on me. I came back from the Bahamas preaching, and I found out that I lost everything. Christians. Christians did that to me. You with me? And then I said, I can do all things to Christ Jesus. And I got a credit score today of a 715, 720. I can do all things to Christ Jesus. So my prayer is simple for you today. Who took my iPhone? Oh, it's right here. My prayer is simple for you today. All you do is stand where you at. And whatever you're going through, whatever your circumstance is, whatever you're struggling, your struggle is not your destination. Your struggle is not your destination. It is, it is propel, it, it's something that God uses to propel you to your destination. He uses it to propel you to your destination because sometimes we are crazy. We get too comfortable in one place too long. You get Spanish people in your house? Let me break it down to you. You want them to leave? Feed them. They leave quick. The same. Look at my Spanish people. They know what I'm talking about. They hang out in your house all day until you, you pop, get the rice and the beans out. And then when you get the rice and the beans and they eat, they're right there. See, I'm talking right there. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. They're right there. When they eat, they're like, oh, I got something to do. You sit in my house for eight hours. You got something to do. You sit in my house for eight hours. I feed you. Now you got something to do. I can do all things <laughs> to Christ. Even if rice and beans or no rice and beans, no pork chops, no totones, no mojito, I can still do all things to Christ Jesus who gives me the strength. I am content. I got godliness. I got godliness and contentment. It's great gain. I know to be broke. I know when to have. I know, I know when it's hunger, peace in Chinese. And I know, what, I know what a steak dinner looks like. I can do all things through him that pay a price for me. Stand to your feet. Amen. Thank you. Simple. If you want to come up, I pray with you. It's a simple prayer. Simple prayer. You come up, I pray with you that you can do all things. You can't never be the devil. I don't care how anointed you are. Listen to me. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how much, how much Hebrew you know, how much Greek you know. You can, never be a, you can never be a devil. You can never be a stronghold. You can never be a spiritual warfare if you, don't, if you don't have faith and believe that you can do all things in Christ Jesus. Those two walk together. Faith and I can do all things walk together. They're inseparable. 
The witches still do witchcraft to me. I get emails, hell, Satan, we're going to kill you. I'm like, dude, I'm going to give me four chicken wings, some french fries, and a, and a, and a sun kiss. I'll be back. I die for Jesus. Say, I die. I don't die because I'm with me in some altar, and they bought a coffin, and they put animal blood in there, and they put all kind of stuff in there. That ain't going to work against me. Trust me. Take the chicken, cook it, and have a good meal. Because I can do all things to Christ Jesus, who strengthens me. Simple prayer, man. Come up. I pray with you. Stand in agreement for you to do all things to Christ. My people, Bible says, Jesus, my people, the reason they don't win the fight and the reason they don't, they're not more than conquerors because they don't believe me that they can do all things. They only believe me sometimes when it's beneficial for them. It's like, it's like the person that tells you they speak in tongue, they throw themselves on the floor, they oil themselves up. Ah, and you're going to get a breakthrough, and you're going to get this, and you're going to get blessed, and you're going to get that. And then, and then when it comes to them, they don't have faith for themselves. I've been there. I'll speak up a storm about faith over you. But when it comes to me, I might, could I borrow some? Because that's the devil's game. You can believe for someone else, but you can't believe for yourself. Because you believe that God can do all things for that person, but you can't do all things for you. That's the devil's plan, the devil's trick to make you believe. Yes, you can believe for her, but you can't believe for you. You with me? You come up, I pray for you. I'm, now, I'm going to pray for you about you can do all things. Come up, come up. I, I, listen, I got dentists. I got good dentists. <sighs> You're not going to pass out. <laughs> Amen. Just come right here. Just come right here in the line, right here, and then we just come over and pray. We just come right there, and we're just going to pray, and we're just going to trust God right there. We're going to pray and trust God, for God wants to impart in you and graft in you that you can do all things through him. If you learn anything in this service, yesterday and today, it's about faith and doing all things through Christ. It's not about how many Bibles you got home. It's not how many Bibles. Where's my inner circle? Come up to the stage right here with me. Come up to the stage up here with me. Come up, my brother. You're my inner circle. You. Where's my inner circle? You, you bring your family up. Bring them right here. Just come up here and chill with me. We're going to have a 40. We're going to have a... Oh, sorry. Can I get that? Yeah, thank you. What's up, my brother? Drink my water, it's not anointing. Got saliva in it. <laughs> People sell you that crap. That to toilet paper is anointing. I can get the same one in Costco's. Man, I, I just I just want to come and pray with you and believe that you can do all things. We 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 in serious times. Look around you. My sister was my sister Laura. She was telling me they have mass shootings in a few places, right? Four cities yesterday had mass shootings. We don't know. There's a, there's, a, there's a church in Texas. I love that church. They people are crazy. They real they real cowboys. It's like I got two churches I go to. I got I go to church in, in, in Texas. They're like real crazy cowboys. They they on they got horses, right? And then <laughs> and they go to this other church in Houston, and they got they got BMWs, Mercedes, and burritos. And then the other church, the other church I go to, the Texas church, they got horses, Bibles, and guns. You go to that church, believe me, you go to that church and you try to rob it, you are, you're going to go have breakfast with Jesus. Quick. Everybody's strapped. Everybody's strapped. The pastor's mom, she got two nines, two nine millimeters. <laughs> the ushers got nine millimeters. The congregation, they go there, they're all strapped. Jesus, Jesus loved Bibles and guns. They're all strapped. The ushers are strapped. The, 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 the people that collect the offerings are strapped. The, the mothers are strapped. The grandmothers are strapped. Everybody got a piece. Some, some people got two. Have mercy for the person that walk into that church and try to do something. 
Remember people going around sh shooting churches? Go to that one. See what happens. Amen. Let's pray. Let's come together. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we come in agreement with the Holy Spirit right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you to fill us with faith and fill us let the word of Jesus Christ be engrafted in our hearts. Lord, let that word be engrafted in my heart that I can do all things to Christ Jesus who gives me the strength. Jesus, I pray that you will increase my faith. I pray, Lord, that you will purify my faith. I pray, Lord, that you will touch me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I pray, Father God, that you will engraft in me the word of God. Father God, you will engraft the fear of God in me, Lord, that every time things happen or things are about to happen, that the fear of God will be my strength, that I know that I will say no to sin and yes to you. Father, let the fruit of the Spirit be evidence in my life. Let the fruit of the Spirit of God be evidence in my life. Father, we touch and agree with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, get closer to me. Teach me your voice. Teach me to hear you loud and clear. No matter how the devil comes and mimic your voice, I want another voice of the Holy Spirit all the days of my life. I will know the voice of the Holy Spirit all the days of my life. Father, every word that I'm fragmented, every word that I'm fragmented, every word that I'm broken, every word that I got stronghold bondages, Father God, every generational devil has to die today in the name of Jesus. Father, we break and destroy the worship of darkness in our family bloodline. We break cancer. We destroy every sickness. Father, every generation of sickness has to die today in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare and decree in the name of Jesus. Every, every, every attack of the enemy of anxiety, every attack of the enemy of bondage, every attack of a, of a, of a perversion, every attack of the enemy of pornographic devils has to die in the name of Jesus. Father, we break oppression, depression, suicide. We break lack. Father, we break unbelief. We break unbelief. In the name of Jesus, we destroy that devil of unbelief. It's impossible to please him if you're entertaining the devil of unbelief. Father, we touch and agree. Holy Spirit, every word that we have a void, Everywhere we have emptiness, everywhere that we lack, only you can fill up the cup. Only you can fill up the cup. Only you can make things whole. Only you. Only you. Only you can heal the mind. Every tormenting devil has to die. Every doubt and unbelief and fear has to die. I don't have to touch you. I'm praying the way God wants me to pray. God said you need to touch him. God said he wants you to touch him right where you at. You don't need me to go and touch you. We're used to that in church. Touch me, grab me, anoint me, throw oil on me, you know, speak over me. No! Get off that crap. Let Touch him like the woman that had the issue of blood. And she said, she changed her mind, her thinking. And she said, if I could touch him, he'll make all things whole. Blind brother man say, son of David, have mercy on me. And I stopped Jesus on his tracks. Today is the day that the Lord has made. That means there's an opportunity 